Hey, it's Azriel Lawless, and once again, you have dropped straight into Hella Vela and found yourself another Lawless interview. And today, I am interviewing, and I'm so happy to be interviewing this guy because I kind of had to chase him down. It's Gaius Augustus, and he writes the most amazing Vela stories. Um, the one that got me and uh, made me really interested to talk to him was Tales of Vernian Youth. But we'll be talking about all the villas he writes uh, as we go forward. Welcome, Gaius. Thank you so much. And I, I should have mentioned uh, my pronouns are they, them. But they, them. Yeah. I'll do my no best. No I'm big old, deal. Gaius. I'm old. Yeah, I'm old too. I have trouble remembering it myself sometimes. So, <laughs> so I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, well, what I want to ask you is the very first question I ask everyone, and I can't wait to hear your answer for this. When did you get started writing? So I'm going to tell a story uh, because really? I've, got, I've gotten asked this question a lot because I've changed careers a lot. Um, and so I was uh, an artist for a long time and I had some other careers but my other big one I got asked a lot was I actually went to school for science and you know whenever you do anything in a career of science everyone always asks when you get interested um, and I always felt like I was weird because I was not the kid who said oh from the time I was very little I always wanted to be a scientist um, but writing from the time I was little I have always loved loved telling stories, and I've had so many different types of stories uh, that I've told. Uh, and the very first ones that I remember were that I was in first grade, and we had spelling words, and we had to write sentences about our spelling words. And I decided I, that sentences were boring, and so I wrote stories. So I wrote detective stories with my spelling words in second grade at, at seven years old um and then it just kind of grew from there so i thankfully do not have those detective stories anywhere um <laughs> i'm sure they were really bad um, i hope not i hope i used the words correctly um yeah so there's that um so then when i was in uh, middle school i actually got into a, a magnet school uh local to my area and it was a fine arts magnet school what um, is that tell me what it is uh, a magnet school yeah it, that's a school where you pretty much have to um they're usually special interest at least where i grew up they were special interest schools um so there was one for math and science and there was one for the arts um, and then they also, um, you have, you can't just like get in, you have to like apply and, and either take a test or something to, to get in. So my school was a fine arts school. So I had to try out. So I had to like dance and draw and write a creative like story and play an instrument and sing, uh, wow. just to get into the school. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't um, even college. It was just. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, wow. and it was amazing. I, I'm so glad I, I went there. Um, and it was a it was a public school though. It wasn't private or anything. It was just a public school that was a special interest. So can school. I ask where you grew up? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Most people only know about it because that's where the golf tournament, the Masters, occurs. Um, <laughs> and it 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 was it felt very much like a railroad town growing up. Uh, it was a very, a very like segregated, but also forced integration sort of town, a lot of issues. Um, but what was interesting about my school was, was that one of the reasons that the magnet schools were founded was because they were having a huge problem integrating schools in the area. And so they actually had race quotas at my school. And so each grade was required to have 40% white, 40% black, and 20% other minorities. Uh, and, and it was to, to make sure that it didn't end up being a, an all white school full of rich kids um, with varying amounts of success um, for, for my school. But because of that, um, and because of the type of people who apply for an art school, it was just a very interesting 
group of people. Um, I met people from all over the place. I met my partner there. Um, I learned a lot about different cultures, not as much as I learned out when I finally left the city, finally. Um, but I, I, and we always joked that like at least half of the students were gay, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so it was just a very like open and creative and supportive environment that I, I'm, I'm just so lucky to have had. Yeah. I'm jealous of you. Yeah. I, sometimes I'm jealous of myself and then sometimes I see this, the great, amazing schools kids are in now and I'm jealous of them. So, you know, um, but I, I was writing a lot. You're not um, seeing a lot of public schools that way that make you jealous, uh, are you? Uh, some, sometimes. But a lot of charter schools I'm noticing out here, out west where I am now. I'm in Arizona now. Uh, and I see a lot of charter schools here that are really cool. And I'm really impressed by. Yeah. Uh, so I did a lot of writing in middle school and high school. I, I think I wrote, I, I want to say like three or four books. Um, in middle school? In middle and high school. Um, I started my first one. I think I started my first real quote unquote book, like beginning to end book in uh, fifth grade, um, I, but I finished it at the end of middle school. That one, I also am I'm happy to say that I don't have it, although I, I feel like it's probably somewhere, but I don't think I have it anywhere, okay. but I do have it in my head. And it's one of the ones that I, I would love to rewrite somewhere someday. Um, and then I, because I was in an art school, I also found out about visual arts. And so I started changing over and I started like watching anime and reading manga. And so I decided I was going to do comics. So I started writing and illustrating comics at that point. And I think I wrote several hundred pages worth of comics. Um, and then I decided to go to, um, to art school for university and I ended up in the film and television program and so then I started writing films uh, and writing for for both kind of episodic um, film and also for like more long uh, you know like feature length film um, stuff and so I, I wrote a lot of things for that as well um, and when I left art school, I just kind of kept it up for a little while until I didn't. Um, and so I have this backlog I never published. No one's ever seen any of my stuff really uh, until I until Vela came around. Wow! Wow! You look like you might have been out of high school for a minute. No, I've been out of high school for a good 15 years, almost 20. I a think. minute? Yeah, a minute. And that was it? Be Bella was your intro to the world? Um, so I did put out a novella a couple of years ago, um, just because I kept not, and I kept being told, just do it. You can't, like there's it's never going to be good enough like it's never going to be good enough you're not never going to be perfect sometimes you just gotta have to get something out there um so i did put that out i never advertised it i never really like told anyone about it um it was in kindle uh, unlimited um for a while i've pulled it since then and actually pulled it out of uh um you can't buy it anymore um yeah for right, for right now too sinks um, like a rock to the bottom of the ocean when you don't uh advertise it yeah i actually um was looking to revise it because the <laughs> this stupid reason um so you used to be able to i thought you used to be able to put title text on the side but it was too short so when i went to update update the cover which is what i was planning to do it said it wasn't long enough for me to put the title on the binding and i was like well if i can't have the title on the binding then i have to rework it so that it has enough pages because it was like you had to have 77 pages and it had like 72. wow right so i was like okay i'm gonna add some some images to it so i'm working with my partner who's an artist to draw some images um and i was like at the same time i might as well do some editing and so i started editing and 
that turn into a massive project. And um, I also then decided to change the size of the book because I didn't really like the size anymore. So I'm really just going to have to come out with a new version anyway, like a new edition, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Because I'm changing everything. But that was out there for, for a while. Um, but again, I wouldn't say that I was out there because I didn't let anyone know I was out there. So Vela, in, in essence, is really the first thing. Wow. Now, when did you hear about Vela? Um, it must have been January of this year, 2022, I think. And how did you hear about it? Yeah, so I was um, looking at, I'd been working on this Bernie and youth story um and I was writing it in an episodic way my my idea was that to create a series of short reads um that could be published relatively quickly um but where you know the burden is a lot less because you're really talking about a lot less words 10 to 20,000 words um and so I felt like you know, I'm still struggling to get books out because of the effort involved with these like huge long things. And so just maybe I need smaller packages. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to do that, how to do it well. And I was in these author groups and I was like, where can I put these? I don't know how to publish things that aren't books. What am I supposed to do with it? Like they're, they're episodic. You can technically read a lot of them out of order. And at some point, once we get to a certain point in the story, you're going to be able to read pretty much all of them out of order. So really? what do I what do I do with this? And someone was like, have you heard of Kindle Vela? It's a new thing from Amazon. Uh, and it sounds right up your alley. Uh, so first thing I did, I, I looked it up a little bit on Amazon, but I looked up a bunch of Facebook groups and I joined. And I mean, I, I hear you talk about it all the time on your interviews. And I know you know it very well. The Kindle Vela author community is absolutely amazing, yes. um, incredibly empowering. Uh, and I was really, really just like encouraged. Um, so I had to rework Vernie and Youth to be, have a lot shorter episodes than I was planning. And I had to change the words that I was using to talk about them because, so right now I call them tales. Um, but at the first, each tale was an episode, like an episode of a TV show. I so see. Um, but now they're called Tales, um, and um, started posting at the beginning of March. Wow. And now your Tales of Avernian Youth, was that the first one? It was. And you uh, started publishing that one in March, mm -hmm. and do you update weekly? Tales of Avernian Youth updates weekly on Thursdays, yes. Okay. And then you have several others. So, um, so you must have liked what you saw after you put up Tales of Vernon and Youth. Yeah. Then what did you put up next? Was it a little bit of chaos I think, theory? I think the next one I put up was Devil Sanctuary. Okay. And Devil Sanctuary was a short story that I had had around for a long time. Um, it's one of the one of those stories that just kind of like comes to you and it just kind of like onto the page um uh, that was probably in 2014 when i wrote it maybe earlier can you tell um, me a little bit about it i haven't sure that one. so so devil sanctuary is about um a girl who's whose family gets visited by a a demon who's known as the devil uh and he visits and he wants her father to build him a magically infused sanctuary um, and her father refuses until their lives are really threatened seriously and then her father leaves and then uh, she's visited by the devil uh, and he says that her father is dead she assumes that he killed him um, and, and um, she gets kidnapped and taken to the sanctuary as a prisoner there. And so the story is really about that journey of hers once she's, ki once she's a prisoner uh, at the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And do we have sexy sex? We have 
no sexy sex. We no do sexy. have, uh, we do have some, a little bit of like steam, I would call it. Um, How but, do you have steam without sexy sex? Well, I have trouble with these definitions. Um, I would say there's, there's a sexual element to it, but there's no sex. Um, for most of the, for a lot of the story, she's underage. Um, I think for, for the bulk of it, she's in her twenties, so it's fine. But, um, but the, the devil actually ends up coming back in, um, as someone named Dovev. Um, and so, and, but all of a sudden his entire attitude has changed. He's like re- pretty kind and like caring. Uh, and so she doesn't really know what to do with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she, there's a lot of this tension there where she's like falling in love with this guy, but she's like, this is the demon who killed my father. So or what she do I thinks do? that she doesn't know that. Right. Well, she, she knows this is the person who came and kidnapped her. Yeah. And, and she knows that uh she's been told that her father is dead and she's made the assumption that this demon has killed her father so you know she's she's kind of decided what's happened and and she's out for revenge um but she's also like really enjoying this man's company and and kind of falling in love with him so there's a lot of that kind of sexual tension there yes okay i was Uh, gonna say that sounds like sexual tension mm -hmm. that's building which is lovely I love sexual tension, but you got to do something with it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot that happens. There's a, there's a couple scenes that I would say are like they're not even explicit. They're they're just kind of intense, but there's no there's you get a resolution at the end as far as what's going to happen. But well, there you yeah, go. As long as you get something, yeah, if something gets resolved. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, but it's very different from Ver- from uh, from Ver- Vernian Youth or Tovi, I call it on most of my social media challenge uh, uh, channels. Um, Vernian Youth is is very humorous, um, which it actually wasn't originally. So that's an interesting story. Um, but the Devil Sanctuary is is much more serious and dark and um, and a very different beast. Now, before I go on and ask you more about your other wonderful stories tell me tell me are you a pantser or planner i'm i'm neither i are you a planter no i <laughs> it's it's completely dependent on the story for me so um i i value outlines and i can get pretty hardcore with my outlining of stories um, but I also sometimes just like writing. Um, and so my goal is usually to have at least one project in every phase possible so that I can always have something to do. Um, I have a lot of really like debilitating um, physical pain issues and mental health issues. And so my goal is always to to really be able to create even when it's difficult um so i'm actually in the middle of developing an outline for a new story it's not really a new story it's really reworking an old story but a new story um and it's an outline and it's one of those where like i am going to outline it to death by the time i start writing this thing is going to be like it's going to be super straightforward that means no matter how dark a depression i'm in I will still be able to just put sentences out there because the outline will be that finessed. Um, but then on the other side, I have a little bit of chaos theory, which um, is one of my other velas. And that is a completely, I'm writing it off the top of my head. Whatever comes out, comes out. I'm not planning anything. And actually when my brain starts trying to be like, oh, well, what if I'm like, stop. This is all about spontaneity and chaos so let's leave it there uh, and and then i have things in between so vernian youth was written with a vague structure in mind and i just wrote it um, and then um after it was done i had uh, i decided to to fix it um because it was pretty bad um and when i did that i wrote out 
somewhat of a, an outline for it so that I could tell where I was moving things around to and how the things should happen. Um, and then after I wrote, wrote it that way, um, up to a point, I was like, this is too serious. I don't want to work on serious stuff while I'm depressed. I want to work on something fun. Uh, and so I was like, what if I just made it fun? Um, and so completely without any sort of organizational structure, I just started throwing random crap into it. Um, and once I got the pacing down as far as far as like how much humor to add, what type of humor, which is typically for Vernian youth, it's, it's typically these kind of asides that are talking about like random people or random history or just random facts and things like that. Um, and I have, I actually finally have had to like create kind of a, like a series Bible just to try and like keep track of everything. Right. Um, but none of that was planned. So I don't really think of myself as either. And I think I work well within both systems. Um, and it's really comes down to what the story is asking of me, you know, like if a story is like there, then why, why pants it when I can just like plot it because it's all there. Um, when something is more vague, it works way better to pants it out. And so I have no qualms with doing that. And, and I most of the time would never post anything like that, though. I, I always do at least one rewrite before anything gets seen by other people. And I even do that with a little bit of chaos theory. I just do it on a small scale, just do episode you by editor? episode. Um, I do not. Um, I, I really struggle with understanding the value of different editors at different times um not saying i wouldn't want to use them but saying that like my understanding of what i'm supposed to be doing is limited um and so i got i get so overwhelmed with like oh but like developmental and like copy and like line and like all these things that it's it, sometimes i'm just like you got to get it out there. Like you can focus on getting that stuff done later, but you got to get it out there. And I do use, um, you know, like Grammarly and Pro Writing Aids free grammar checker. Um, and I like to think of myself as pretty thorough, although I feel like I'm asking for somebody to go read my stuff and find a bunch of problems with it. Um, because I I go through about for Vernian Youth, I go through it five, six rounds of editing before I, I even think about putting it up. And then what's your writing tool? What do you use? I'm in Google Docs just because I because of the pain and stuff, I have to be able to write on my phone as well as on my computer. Um and so I that's the only thing I found that seems to work okay, but I don't love it. Uh, it's just what I got well you know yeah and then even when I have a final version before I put it up on Vela I run it through pro writing aids grammar checker again and I reread it out loud and I reread it silently a couple more times before I actually like press that publish button so yeah I, I just have a very like you know it's scary yeah it's scary in my former life there. I was a uh a paralegal I was a drafting paralegal so I was used to write pleadings and instruments and blah 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 but but I had a horrible problem I had a horrible problem I just got document blindness immediately mm. I couldn't see squat all so everything I did had to be passed through the secretary because I see that I couldn't see that shit I just couldn't see it so like there'd be an errant period or something mm. and it was supposed to be a comma and I'd miss that. And, da, 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 da. and so I know my limitations. Yeah. You know, my, my personal opinion is that as a writer, your job is to write and create a coherent thought and story. Your job is not to have perfect grammar. 
to have every single period in place or apostrophe or any of that stuff. Right. And, and editors are, that's their job. Right. And so if you're not good at spell checking your stuff, that's fine. Like, uh, that's why editors exist. Like, you shouldn't have to be a one person shop. Doing and everything. I use I use them. I use one. I I I found that I had so many freaking errors. Like, and I would think it was clean, guys. I would think it was totally clean. Put it up, you know, and then go and read it. And that's really embarrassing. You're reading it because it looks really cool mm-hmm. in your Kindle Vela, and so you're reading it. Blah. You're like, oh my god, oh my god. I know. And it's and it's sad, right? Because. 99 percent of the time, either people aren't going to notice or they can still understand the sentence just fine. Right, but there's so many of them that are just total, total, yeah. you know, anal retentive huns about any little mistake. Yeah, and, and I think there's a balance there. Like I, uh, a few weeks ago during the free writing time I was reading a a vela that was really good like I really enjoyed the story um but it was so full of errors that I struggled to read it like I I have a little bit of reading comprehension issues sometimes and so typos really throw me off um which I again I do not think of that as the quality of the writer right Right. um I but but it is a a a about an issue um that that comes up that that makes it hard for me to read um and I struggled so hard like it it, in some ways it like speaks to the story that the story was good enough that I kept working at it um but it was a rough ride because like they would start quotations and not in them and so I didn't know when people were stopping talking and not and there were lots of typos so some a lot of times I wasn't sure exactly what the sentence was supposed to be saying and uh and I I think if if anyone came back and showed me that my work was that way, I would probably stop posting altogether because I just like, I, I can't put something like that out because I know how hard it is for me to read it. And again, it doesn't mean anything about the actual quality of the stories being told. It, it's just a matter of like this kind of personal thing that I have because I have so much trouble reading. Right. So... Speaking of, hang on, before we get on, let's go and talk about your other, you've got two yeah. others, right? Yes. There's still two more to look at. So yes, and those are actually under uh, chaos theory. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that what you put down after Devil's Sanctuary? That, um, no, actually, that's my most, well, that's my second most recent one. Uh, that's pretty recent. I, I Next, I did Clouds from Heaven. And um, that's under your pen name, Gaia Jewel. Correct. Yeah. So um, I, so I'm trans uh, and I, I was born female. Uh, and while I was female, of course, I was female for the first 23 years of my life. Um, and I wrote a lot of most of my stories that were finished at that point were when I was female. So um, I wanted to, to take another look at those and, and get them out there. Um, but they're so different from what I write now um, and what I would write. And I, I considered rewriting them, but I feel like they're, I feel like, especially this series, um, which is the Skies Are Blue series, I feel like it's a, they're pretty strong because they're, they're very much these like character vignettes. So it's, it's Clouds from Heaven. And then my most recent series is the, um, the follow-up. Uh, the second book in the series called Rain Does Fall. Yeah. Um, and they're really these character profiles of, uh, of one person through their childhood and, uh, and, and teenagehood. Um, and so they're, I feel like they're pretty, they're really strong. I really enjoy reading them. Um, and I really enjoy the characters, but I didn't feel like I should put them under my normal name. So I, I came up with Gaia Jewel just to kind of like be able to have somewhere to put them uh, where I could share them, but it was, there was some kind of delineation between them. Yeah, yeah. Um, You definitely, if you're an eclectic writer, you got to kind of group your stuff. 
Yeah, I've argued whether in the future I should move Devil Sanctuary over to another pin name because I have other stories coming out that are going to be more similar to that. Oh, and there's a whole universe that that is a part of um, that I have a bunch of stories for. Um, and again, it's it's very serious and um, and dra dramatic. Um, but yeah, right now I'm two two <laughs> two pin names is plenty for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Clouds from Heaven uh, and Rain Does Fall, like I said, they're these kind of vignettes. Um, Clouds from Heaven is about a girl, her name is Raquel, and she uh, has really, really extremely controlling parents. Um, and really, they're very emotionally abusive in a lot of ways. Um, and she has a really bad sense of self. Um, but she's also a really strong character. Like she's a really strong sense of purpose and a really strong sense of loyalty. Um, and so we meet her, her best friend, um, who is this just very like outgoing and like kind of inappropriate tomboy. Um, and we go all the way up through her meeting um, her future husband uh, and uh, and trying to figure out how she can work on this life uh, and, and have this life of, of her own uh, while also dealing with her, her family situation, um, which is pretty tough. Uh, and then, and it's, it's a hard one to market. I don't know what to do with it. I, I, I often put it, the only thing I've read that I think is anywhere similar is V.C. Andrews. I don't know if you've ever read any of her it's, work. Yes. Of her work. You're talking about the V.C. Yeah, Andrews like, that wrote like Flowers um, in the Attic and Black and White Magic. I think so. Yeah, Flowers yeah. in the Attic. That series is the one that I know the best. And um, again, they're just kind of hard to pin down. Um, so I, I don't know. I threw some categories on there and was like, all right, whatever. Um, but yeah, and so Rain Does Fall is actually about her best friend's daughter. Uh, so her best friend's daughter is talking about her life growing up. Uh, and it does kind of go alternate university a little bit because um, the biggest difference between the universe is that there's this uh, organization that Raquel helps found um, called the Peace Coalition. Um, and it kind of balloons into this really big movement uh, in, throughout the country and later on the world, but don't worry about that. That's universe stuff. Um, and because of that, some things are different. And the biggest thing that's different for Rain Does Fall is that they're living in California and they have decided that they should restructure the city. So they're pretty much like, it's more complicated than this, but they're pretty much plowing down the cities and rebuilding them from scratch in an organized and meaningful way um, oh. to make cities more sustainable and, and things like that. Um, and so there is a bit of alternate university-ness to it. And, but in general, you know, it's just this, this girl who's growing up super spoiled and rich and, uh, and she's, you know, like in love with her best friend who doesn't love her back. And so she's having boy, boy trouble and uh and trying to figure out like how to live her life uh, and she also ends up getting you know to, to for support she kind of reaches out to this like kind of older male uh, and, and who has like a uh, kind of inappropriate um interest in her mm -hmm. um and so she's really just learning about the world and it's not that she's sheltered it's just that she's kind of ignorant like she just doesn't look around her um and she's just kind of learning about first small simple things and and then as she becomes more and more kind of aware um bigger things that kind of uh, affect things at a much broader scale is she likable is she relatable i find her extremely likable um she's she's much funnier than raquel is 
Um, but she's funny in a very like spoiled way. Like she'll just be so Raquel is very like naive and innocent. And so she'll say things like, golly gee, right? And it it's funny in a like, oh my gosh, you're so freaking freaking innocent kind of way. Yeah. Um <laughs> But but Kristen, who's the the narrator for Rain Does Fall, she's likable in a very like, yeah, I don't want to do shit either. Like I just want to fucking live my life too. I don't want to have to freaking deal with the these people and these things. Why can't I just do my own thing? Uh, so I think she's incredibly relatable, and I've always said she was probably the easiest one to write because she's just like her voice is so crystal clear in my head. That's cool. That's cool. And she cool. loves having purple hair. So, <laughs> well, I can say that those of us who have purple hair, it's hard. It's so hard to get this color that uh, you better love it. <laughs> yes, I did purple uh, last year for a while, uh, for a little while. It was it was really dark though. It was a very dark color. Yeah, I'm. I like this. This is close as I can get to an amethyst. That's mm, what I'm I think. It's gorgeous. Of. I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted it so badly for lots of years now, but it wasn't until after COVID had had me retired for two years that I took the plunge and bleached the hair, which is what's required to get it mm-hmm. this color. Yep. And yeah, I had to do, I usually do teal, but last year I was... Teal's uh, love. Yeah, I love it. It's actually jade. I use, um, what's it called? Ion Brilliance. Ah. I on color brilliance and the color is just fantastic. Like I, I had no problems once I bleached my hair, getting the color I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, let me ask you this. Have you, uh, you know, have you, have you found the monetary rewards for the writing that you've done on Villa? What have you, have you, have you found those satisfying? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think I have the same fears everyone else does around bonuses. Um, you know, I don't necessarily love, you know, when you're on a, a platform like Kindle Unlimited, you, the bonuses are the only way you get paid, right? Um, but on a, on a platform like Kindle Vela, where you're getting paid royalties and the bonuses are, in a lot of ways, because they know the royalties are bad, um, it, I have a lot of trouble relying on on the bonuses and and they're still pretty unstable oh i don't think you should oh i agree completely i told Um, my banker i'm like i'm not going to update my income until this stuff's been around for at least two years yeah i don't two years performance to look at so absolutely i agree and and they're so unstable um and there are so many like variables to consider even the stuff that we do know much less the stuff we have no idea about Right. Um, and so I've been very happy with it. Yeah. Um, that money has been going towards personal expenses. I'm in some ways, unfortunately. Um, but I'm also lucky that I have a full-time job that pays very well. Um, so I've been, I have been trying to at least save the amount that I need to pay the taxes on it. Um, but I've been trying desperately to save enough to, you know, put towards like editing once my stuff is ready to go to publishing or or perhaps cover design or or whatever else I might need I like I said I I feel like totally ignorant um to all of that so I, I'm sure there's other things that are expensive that I'm going to find out as I go I have um, no idea what I'm doing so you yeah know, just throw that right on out there let you know I'm learning from other people though you know exactly because we, we've got a lot of beautiful beautiful people in Kendall Villa and a lot of them are like freaking crack smokers they just go like straight in and like hey I've got a hundred thousand word novel know, here know. you know hey I gotta go I gotta go <laughs> publish this shit hey I gotta put this up for hey you know and, know. and they're doing it and they're doing it like at breakneck speed we got test combs doing that we got before test combs there was uh freaking gauge greenwood mm-hmm. there's been you know a ton of them ton of them i want you to know i got my first book out right book one of gendlina goodwitch of the west i don't know if you've seen it out there but i've put it up i had i was babied and coddled the entire 
entire way through by my friend who is experienced, right? She's like, oh God, give it to me. And, uh, you know, (laughs) let's, let's run it through a couple of editors. And then, and I don't, I'm not talking about electronic editors. I'm talking about Mm -hmm. human eyeballs. Yeah. And so we did. And, uh, and then she took it and she did the formatting for the book. She made the cover for me. Wow. Her husband did the formatting for the ebook. Wow. Nice. I know. I know. I know. So book two, I'm going to be clueless AF. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, that's not how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to learn from experience. <laughs> well, I actually conned her husband into doing the uh, the formatting on the um, the Kindle Kindle version, right? Kindle mm-hmm. version that you put up there for unlimited and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because, guys, I had no freaking idea that Zon charges you the writer for the weight of that file. Okay. Oh. So when somebody buys it, they're going to charge you some money to transfer mm. it to them. Okay. Interesting. And if they return it. Yeah. I have heard about that one back. All right. And so, and I didn't know this. And my friend told me that this is a place where a lot of indie authors, so I'm telling you this for a reason. Uh, she said, this is a place where a lot of indie authors really cock it up because they'll get it where the weight of the file is so big that by the time they've paid the freight on it, they've, you know, okay, so they were only making like a buck 40 or $2 and 10 cents, you know, and turns out the freight's 40 or 50 cents Mm. of that, you know, and when you're looking at a $2 and 10 cent profit, 40 or 50 cents freight is far too much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I think I used um, Kindle Create when I made mine, my novella. Yeah, you uh, made your ebook, you mean? Yeah, it, it was the novella that I put out before I was on right. um, Kindle Vela, uh, which has since been taken down for, for now. Um, right. Right. And yeah, when I made the ebook for it, I did that in Kindle Create. Um, and I, I hope that they optimize the files they don't but i don't know they don't. Um, john i got this sucker back from him and it weighed so little that it was hard to believe it had the yeah and i thought and i i worked tech i don't know what you do for a living but i worked tech for many years and it's not just a matter of a file transfer either so i because i asked the guy i said can i just go in throw it in there into the formatting tool and then give it to you as a whatever that file extension is and you pull it in and you do the you know optimization for some reason that won't work so i don't know Mm. but anyway anyway there's all kinds of gotchas out there i just don't you know there's so many things that i don't know yeah one of them you know it's it's scary to do it for the first time and it's scary when you go to do it for the second time and you feel like you still don't know really what you're doing. Yeah, I have no clue. So I, I, I don't know. I, at this point, though, I think you're doing the right thing. You just get it out there at the best way you can. And um, from everything I read and hear, building that backlog is the most important thing you can do. So Exactly. And, and I say that. Inventory. If you're going to sell, yeah. you got to have inventory. And I say that, but I also have like been really like back and forth about whether I'm going to put any of my stuff out as ebook or... Well, we'll have a separate conversation on that where I'll set a fire under your ass and we'll get you on that train, buddy. We will get you on that train because you have to, because you know, you know, I know, you know, that in time, Bella will not be paying like it's doing now. Mm -hmm. And you need your catalog. You need your work up there so that you can be pushing that stuff because they're like little, you know, the way I see it is they're like little worker bees. You get them created, you set them out there and they make money for you, but you've got to like, you know, massage them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just talking to to Tess, I think last week I I was asking her about like the trend, the transition for, from Vela to, to, to Kindle. Yeah. I, because, you know, I hear some people who are like doing rewrites and you know, other people who are just like leaving it as is or putting it out. 
I always, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard and, that too. And I've actually interviewed a couple of people who have taken and, well, they used the proper term, novelized, novelized the serial, right? So they, I guess they fleshed it out, gave more descriptions, things like that. I don't know. I don't know. But I did have a couple of guests that say that they had novelized their shit and that it's not the same. Yeah. And I, you would expect that, right? Because the whole no. point of serial fiction is supposed to be that you're writing these short, snappy, lots of cliffhanger type episodes See, that go on forever so and ever. Whereas a book, everyone really wants and expects these like very highly structured things. And, and I'm like, I don't know that I care to put that much work into something that's well, already a really great story. They're not getting it from me. They're not getting it from me. Mine looks exactly like the serial. My book too, I'm going to give them something like a holiday episode or something if oh, they cute. buy the paper one. You know what I mean? I'm only sticking it in the paper one. But other than that, the person who buys the Vela can rely on the fact that it's going to be the same as the book. Yep, that's what I think. I mean, unless I had a good reason. See, or, so I like think. so clouds from heaven and rain does fall i have a very good reason for not wanting to put them out as books because they were written as books and they're written as part of a universe that is has crossovers with other stories and since i wrote them and edited them um that world the timeline has changed and so where they are in the timeline has changed and so if I was going to put them out as a book, I would not accept any less than being able to rewrite them so that they fit into the correct timeline. And that's a reason, right? Like, that's a good reason to, to not put it out as a oh, book. Oh, hell yeah. That's or a good reason because you don't want people contacting you going, what's wrong with you? Are you like, are yeah, you I thought this was in the same series. This, this character <laughs> is, is 15 here. And you said that this happened when she was 20. Uh, you know and yes. it's, it's actually a much bigger jump than that like we're talking like probably a hundred or several hundred years of difference um, I can't so believe like, how long I'm keeping you talking guys <laughs> I it took me so long to get you on this show now I'm just asking you every damn thing in the world no and, it's fine uh, I, I mean we got to make it worth it right people are gonna well, you know I guess and uh well I got to make it worth your while come on here good god what is this uh-oh I don't know. It's something I rolled over, over, and over again, and my heart would flow. Oh, no. <laughs> it's black now, guys. It's black. It's, it's just a, a new spot on the floor that we will never investigate. It totally looks like I crushed up a bunch of crayons under the wheels of my chair, so I'm oh, not no. sure exactly Was it like a snack or is. something? <laughs> um, uh, sometimes I drop a snack or something, and then I roll over, and I'm like, oh, no. I now have to clean that up. That sucks. What I hate is rolling over my own goddamn foot. Yeah, that's pretty horrible. I don't. And I do, do that. that I've, really I've done that. Purple toenail, the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't sound fun. No, no. Mm. But anyway, that's not what I was going to ask you. What I want to ask you is that since you are so freaking careful and you look at everything a million times before you put it out, tell me now, sir, what are some Vela's that you read that you might want to tell me about that I can read too? Okay. So I have some Vela's that I really, really love. And I, I'm not a binge reader um, because I have like a lot of pain issues. It's really like difficult for me to like sit and read stuff. So these are things that like really keep me interested. They're also very well written. Um, and the first one I want to mention is actually, I mean, I'll just say like anything by Nia Quinn is a, is a good story. Nia um, Quinn? Nia, N-I-A, N as in Nancy, I-A, and then Quinn. Um, and A Wreck of Witches, uh, season one is complete on, and it is absolutely amazing. I love it. Is it, it. funny? Um, that one is a little less funny. Uh, their other one that I love is Sigils and Sushi. That okay. one is pretty humorous, but what I love about Mia's writing is she does such a good balance of humor and drama and not, not the type of drama like 
people arguing for no reason drama but drama is in like the actual depth of story that you get and that's something that i find i feel like a lot of things i read are either too funny for me or too dramatic for me and the humor sometimes doesn't like have a good place in it even though it's there um and she just does such a like i never it never feels awkward like when she tells it when she tells a joke or like drops a like huge plot bomb it never feels awkward it just always feels totally natural and it's not the first thing i ever binged on on kindle vela but her stuff is definitely some of the stuff that i'm willing to to deal with the pain in order to continue reading um okay so i love her stuff so the next one you've heard before, Kendra Griffin's A People's History of Magic. This was the first story I ever binge read on Kindle Vela. Um, and similarly, Kendra is so good at balancing the humor with these like really deep, pretty dark story elements. Um, I also really love um, a story that challenges me and A People's History of Magic I mean, I probably spend half the time reading it, looking up words, and I use the app, um, the Kindle app on my phone, and you can like highlight words and it gives you the definition, but also you can like, if you sw- swipe over, it has like Wikipedia pages. So like they're pop culture references that I have no idea what she's talking about. And so I can pull it up there. Uh, so I spend a lot of time like feeling like I'm learning something in a story that like, is technically about some dude in school learning magic um and so i'm learning new words that i can't promise that i remember after the fact Mm -hmm. um but i remember them temporarily um, and also learning a bunch of pop culture stuff that i probably will never watch but it's nice to like be able to use that captain america gif that's like i i know understood that reference um and so i it's just a great story um I, I love it a lot. Uh, and then there's one by someone named, um, she changed her name, uh, her Vela, I mean, her author name recently. It's Jen F. Rose. And the story is called All You Need Is Magic, but need is spelled like kneading dough. Okay. Um, and that one, I don't know if it's, I don't actually don't know her at all. I, I've had conversations with, with Nia and Kendra, um, but I, I, I've i seen her in the author groups once a while ago, but um, I haven't, I don't know her. Um, and it, it seems like the story might be on hiatus. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. And since, you know, Kindle Vela doesn't give us a way to communicate with our readers. Um, there's, there's, they're, they're doing it though. They've got people beta testing the new comic. Yeah, yeah I, I know that, but like, I would like, well, we're going to get to that in a minute, but like there should be a way to to put like a little banner message or something saying like season two coming soon or or on temporary hiatus back in december or something um just to like let people know what's going on but all you need is uh, is magic is this really cute story about I, i say cute and then i'm gonna use death in the same sentence uh this this girl whose mother has died and she um it's did, didn't really have like a super close relationship with her mother and so she's going and as she's looking at the apartment her mother was living in she realizes that things are not as they seem and that her mother was most likely murdered um and oh. it's, it's it's and there's where we are in the story the magic part is very subtle so just extremely subtle it's like just there enough to make me like what the heck is going on why is she hearing these voices in her head what does this bird know that we don't know like (laughs) just you know like just enough to keep you like that's nice wondering about it in the back of your mind but not distracting you from the story at all um, and it also has like a really cute like romance side to it that I I'm not like I do like reading romance but recently I haven't really enjoyed romance all that much um, and so 
it's got ju- like a really 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 well balanced mix of like romantic camaraderie and more of a like building a friendship camaraderie which i which i enjoy um and so i highly recommend it i hope that she continues to write it and i and finish it because it's absolutely amazing um and i love it well wonderful so that's three of them is that it um well there's one more story i wanted to recommend if that's okay, okay. i know you typically put people at three so i didn't want to like no, overstep I go my four, down. five sometimes <laughs> got, you know um so the last one is last train home by sienna egler you're just um, coming up with authors i don't know well you know i watch these episodes and i hear people talk about the same stories over and over again and i'm like those are good stories but i also read these other stories so these are all, these are by by chance my favorites but okay. no i love it i love it when we get new authors we need but new it's also Bella. yeah but it's also like these are really amazing stories um but and it's also nice to say like hey i don't know if you've heard this before uh but see uh, last train home is i i think you might call it a lit rpg i don't really understand that genre very well but it's this this sorry i i always think of it as a kid but they're not a kid they're a grown-up it's this person who uh gets on this train ends up in this magical world and is trying to like survive and figure things out in this magical world and like learn magic and sword play and like all just all sorts of cool stuff um that's very much like a video game um and it's just a super cute story um with great representation the main character is non-binary um and uh and it's just like and got really cute characters like one of the character main characters is a i think a corgi um like a talking corgi what? The what a talking i don't know it's just super cute and engaging and imaginative and i love it that's fantastic well that's wonderful these are all solid recommendations and i look forward to listing them both in the uh description of this video where i'm going to list all your work and uh then also well we don't list the shout outs uh when i put it out on facebook not not we don't put their links it's about your links when i put it out on facebook so um the next question that i have for you is as you probably know from the format of this show if you suddenly awoke tomorrow and had the weight of Kindle Vela on your shoulders. They said, okay, guys, Augustus, you are now CEO, smarty pants. Now show us what you can do. What, if anything, would you do to improve this platform for both the readers and the writers? All right. So um, the first thing that I would do is not add comments or what's the other one everyone always says, go international. Um, so I'm not going to say either of those things um because i have no feelings about either of those things um but one of the things that really really bugs me is the searchability and discoverability on kindle vela um, when i am on the kindle vela app i'm sorry the kindle app using kindle vela i literally type in the name of a story verbatim and it does not find any results i know and one of the struggles I have is that I read under my family account, uh, my family's Amazon account, but I write under my writer's account. So I logged into the Kindle app under my family's account. But when people post links on Facebook, it logs me into my, um, my personal account. Um, and so what I have to do is log in to my personal account, copy the name of the story, then yes. go over the app and paste it. And it doesn't come up. And I'm like, it's a liter- I literally copied it. Why would you not find it? I don't understand. Um, which is better on, on PC, I admit, and in the browser. Um, not but, a lot. But it's not a lot, exactly. You've got, you've got to actually take the first step, which is to go into the Kindle Vela sub yep. database. Yep, it's ridiculous. And I, you have to type Kindle Vela. Once you're in Kindle Vela, that sub database, you can find any sort of stories you want. Mm-hmm. But if you try it straight out from Amazon or straight up from Kindle, yeah, you, you won't find it. 
S O L. And that's just searchability. So the other side of that is discoverability. And one of the things that drives me insane and that we see like exacerbated whenever we have these kind of specials, uh, like the free promo days we had earlier this month, is that it's really incredibly difficult to find new stories to read. And when you do find things, they're usually either on the top page of one or more categories or they're in the top faved list. Um, and there's so many great stories that are not on the top faved list that are a couple of pages into the tags and um, and just don't get very much attention because they, you can't discover them anywhere. No. Um, and I, I just feel like I should be able to say I want a fantasy story that does not have, that's non-romance and that has these other elements in it be able to find and those could be tags right even if i could search for like three tags at once and it finds stories that match those and it says like a percent match but like you can't do any of that you can search what like you click on a tag and it shows you that tag or you search and it shows you like sort of generically something where the where the text is in the title or maybe some maybe the description i'm not sure but I, I don't just, know some stuff I hit and I have no idea where it came from. Yeah, I just I feel like the search engine should be able to allow me to discover new stories that I will enjoy. And it doesn't. Um, and so typically the way I find new stories is getting on these Facebook groups and looking for stories that either I haven't read before or that don't have many comments on them and trying them out and seeing what happens. And I, I mean, I'm a pretty eclectic reader. So it's not like I'm like looking for this like very one specific niche category. Um, I, and yeah, I just, I think that we deserve better. Um, and I think that that readers who are there only for reading deserve better because the only way that Bella's gonna succeed is if readers can find stories they like. Yeah. And right now that's really hard. It is very difficult. So. Uh, so so the next thing that I would do is I would actually increase the author royalties from 50% to 70%. Um, because I do think 50% is pretty silly. Um I have no reason for thinking that other than the fact that Amazon is a ginormous company and uh and authors deserve royalties because it's our writing. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, like a banner message. So I don't know if you are on any other apps, but I'm really heavy into web comics. And like I said, I used to, um, I used to write comics too. Um, and I, 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 I've gotten really happy with the Webtoon app. Uh, and one of the things they have on there is when season one is done, they have like a little message that they can put up. I don't know if this is the authors or if the publishers have to do it or if they have to do it through Webtoon, but there's a little message that comes up that says like, this story will return soon or season two starts next week or whatever. And I would just love to have some kind of little banner message, even if it was templated, like you could only choose from these things like will return soon or season two coming soon or whatever like that would even be okay but right now it's just i feel like there's no way for me to know what's going on in a very quick manner just by going to the freaking story that's right. annoying um because you've got one that's in flux or you think it is yeah exactly and i love the story I, it's, i'm not gonna unfollow it and i check it every once in a while because that's another gripe that I, I can't sort my follows by latest updated um, or see on the list when they last updated. So I have to check each one yeah. Um, because yeah, right. I'm going to remember how many episodes I've read of that story. Um, but yeah, like it would be nice to just be able to see a message from her saying like on hiatus. And then even if there's no end date, at least I know right. not to scroll down and figure out if I, if, I, I'm just going to make up an episode number, but if that giant read episode 29 now is one that I've actually read or not. Right. Um, so yeah, that would be really helpful. Um, and then my last gripe that I would probably change, but I have no, not, I don't know enough about it in order to say how to change it, is I would change how they're marketing. 
um, at least as far as Facebook ads, because we can look up Facebook ads. Um, and I have looked up Kindle Velo's Facebook ads, and they come in two flavors. One is a flavor that is advertising to authors, join and tell stories in a new but cool way. And then there are ones that are to readers, which is like read stories one episode at a time. Um, and I would never click on either one of those because I don't think they're very good ads. But at the very least, if I'm an author and I see there's a new platform from Amazon, just the name Amazon would make me want to click it. But as a reader, seeing those ads, there's really nothing inspiring about them. Um, and there's nothing genre specific about them. There's nothing, there's no hook. It's just like, come read the episodes. And it's like, if that doesn't mean anything to anyone, then what's the point? Uh, so yeah, I just, I think that they should, and I, and I would look more at, and, and at the same time, I have seen ads for like Wattpad come across. And there have been many times when I've wanted to click on a Wattpad app and the only thing, um, a Wattpad ad, and the yeah. only thing that stopped me was that it was on Wattpad, which I just don't feel like getting on to that platform. Uh, nothing against it. I just don't feel like it. Um, it's mostly fan fiction. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, I... I think a lot of what I was writing first was fan fiction or original fiction that I masqueraded as fan fiction. Um, but yeah, I mean, like whatever they're doing, like that grabbed me super, super quick. But uh, the Kindle Vela ads I've seen have not done that. So I would definitely look at what other platforms are doing as far as advertising and then change my marketing strategy. I'm also, I don't know, I'm still kind of wary about why they're marketing so heavily. I think last time I looked, there were like eight ads total out for, for Vela and six of them were to authors and two were for, um, for towards readers. And of course, I have no idea if like the budget was split more evenly, but I don't know, it's kind of sketchy to, to be continually marketing more keep marketing on and on and on for authors and not putting that same level of effort into marketing for readers um i don't know dude i think i think probably the short answer here is if you were hired tomorrow you would just go and poach the wattpad marketing uh lead and have done you know i mean i'm just saying that if it works Hey, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm offering solid corporate advice. Yeah, Amazon. Go get the Wattpad advertising lead. Mr. and Mrs. Kindle Vela, please listen and create better ads because, damn, there are some great stories on Kindle Vela. There are. I absolutely did not expect to find as much good writing and stories that I liked as I have found. I'm a very picky reader. It, no I really struggle uh, with, no kidding. with getting into a story. And there are so many good it works yes. on Kindle Vela. It truly there are. And, and new voices, I mean fresh, yeah. fresh, like lettuce crisp, man. Yep. I love it. And uh, you know, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. It's been very good to me. And I've been on for well over a year now. Mm -hmm. and uh i'm happy and getting stuff done that i never thought i'd get done getting into a community where people have so much knowledge mm -hmm. you know and getting to like hang out and work with young writers they don't seem to mind that i'm ten thousand years old like false doom you know and uh, <laughs> they don't seem to care <laughs> and uh yeah so much so much the community the the camaraderie the the convenience of it mm -hmm. it's all been great i think yeah i love canovella in a lot of ways um because of what it opened up for for me i mean there's a lot of problems i you know i, I won't necessarily say that like it's the it's the best platform in the world and i like many other people struggle to figure out how to get readers and how to advertise and um especially like not paying bazookas for advertising and also like building an author brand with serials 
is it seems to be really difficult because all of the advice out there seems to be for books uh, and it's hard to know what carries over and what doesn't um but i do think that with the talent and the um and the quality of work that's on kindle vela that it's not we are not we don't seem to be the limiting factor i don't think that the quality or or of the work that's on kindle vela is a limiting factor the, the limiting factor is external to us yes. and i know that there's a huge push for writers to bring their own like author platforms right to bring your bring reader. your own audience yeah and i and i understand that because that's the best way to build a platform is to get super big authors in and get their readers to come too but if their authors only if those readers only read that author and can't find other authors because this discoverability is shit then what's the point uh, and so i really think that yeah they need to uh, look at their priorities again uh, you know this comments thing that, that just happened so for anyone who is not paying attention or is watching this in the future just this week uh we found out that at least one story uh is beta testing comments um and again i don't really have a, any opinion on that because i feel like it's one of those things that could be like super amazing or like super disastrous um I won't turn it on i hope it's at least optional yeah, I haven't. I had. I, I actually have those kind of questions for her about whether she opted in and yeah, and what will... what she can do. I don't know. I'm just. Oh. I'm playing it by ear. This whole platform is feels sort of like a shit show sometimes. Oh, honey. Um, <laughs> but... we've come to our last question. We've gone well over an hour, mm -hmm. so let's get to the last thing. And the very let's last thing I ask everyone is. What would you like to say to those readers who just listen to the video and they're like clicking your work and this is how they're getting to know Gaius Augustus for the very first time? What would you like to say to them? I think I always start by saying I'm sorry because my work isn't everyone's cup of tea and I understand that and I respect that and sometimes hope I hope I'll make you laugh. I hope that sometimes I'll make you have other positive or negative emotions based on wherever the story is at that time. Um, but yeah, there might be some things in my stories that might make people a little uncomfortable. And um, I am writing my truth. You know, I, I live in a, in a community and in a in a world that is full of diverse people living in experiencing diverse things uh and we live in a world that's magical uh whether we want to believe it or not um and in order to to tell that truth sometimes i gotta tell stories that don't jive with some people and that's awesome you know we're we're all in different places if you read it and you like it, then what I want to say is, please follow up, join my newsletter, follow me on social media. I don't know, let me know you exist so that I can like quell the imposter syndrome or whatever. Uh, and keep reading and, you know, you'll get my deepest thanks because I, I truly, when I first started publishing on on Zella as well as the novella before that, I I didn't believe anyone was going to read my work ever. And, and if they did read it, I didn't believe anyone was going to enjoy it. And I've been pleasantly surprised by people telling me that that is not the case. That is so. not the case. At least with Tales of Vernian Youth, I can speak to that. I can't. I haven't read the other ones yet, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to. So, well, Tales of Burning Youth was definitely one of the ones I thought people were not going to jive with because it well, was wrong. I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. Yeah, someone was just beating me down yesterday with like, "No, it's good. I swear, I'm not lying to you." <laughs> well, good, good. I'm glad you need people to beat you down with that. Very so true. that's about it you guys we've heard from Gaius Augustus and I look forward to putting this up so you guys can get to know his stories as well and from Hella Vella, peace.
Peace. Thank you. Thank you.